Growing up uh, where I'm from, mental health was something was taboo. It's something that we don't talk about. It's still something that uh, we're either not allowed to or not uh, encouraged to share. How are you feeling today? All right, let's go with that. Bam. It's pretty hot, so that's like my sweat. <laughs> I'm like, hey, what are we doing? <laughs> It's in between this one, right? This one or this one, but this is my favorite emoji, so I'll use this one. I think I'm feeling good today. I feel energized, probably because I had a Celsius. <laughs> I would feel here today. Eh. I am here today. <laughs> Maybe probably between here. Yesterday it started off like this last night, and then it kind of like. Slowly got better, so we're getting better. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here right now. <laughs> Rate your mental health on a scale of one to 10 and why? Right now, I'm at an eight. I know I just feel good, I have my bangs. I'm good. At this very moment, <laughs> like one, cause I'm so anxious, I'm no, just kidding. Um, I think like generally, I am really blessed with a very tight-knit family and my friends. So because of that, because of my support system, I want to say I'm at eight or nine. Today I'm at a five, uh, just because I'm stressed and I'm sad. But uh, I think like on average, it just depends on the day. Yeah, maybe, maybe a six, just because I'm feeling some uncertainty. Four. <laughs> Today I'll say we're feeling a six. I think my mental health is at a, I'd say 7.5. <laughs> I think I'm very aware of what it would take to get to a 10, but um, for me, 10, you know, you always need to have room to grow and room to evolve. I'm at a seven, so that's where I really, it's not, it's not a hundred, definitely not, um, but I'm functioning, I'm doing well, and I can definitely say that I'm still happy. I'm still, you know, like showing up to whatever I need to do. And generally, I'm not like, trying to hide behind some things. Who do you talk to about your feelings? Uh, Winston. <laughs> Who's Winston? Winston's my dog. Friends back home, those are the people that I feel comfortable just confiding my feelings to. And now that they're not on island, I don't usually talk to people about my feelings here, but it's good that my friends back home were connected through the internet, so I can still, I'm still able to talk to them about that. Most of the time I can talk to my sister about it, um, but there are some situations or like some feelings that I go through that I feel like she might be a little biased on some things. Um, so sometimes like I turn to like online friends cause um, you know, they don't really know you, right? So uh, yeah, as I just find it easy to talk to things that I don't feel my sister would fully understand. A close friend or my other half, I go to them first and if not, it's basically like anyone who's nearest me. So it could also be like family, like my mom or my sister. I'm very like open when it comes to my emotions. If we're being honest, I have a hard time talking to people about my feelings. I think even uh, talking to my other half or my mom has been very difficult. A lot of stuff I keep to myself um, just because like I feel like I'm able to like manage it better. But like when I do feel the need to talk about my feelings, uh, it's my wife. When I feel like I need someone to just listen, um, it will be someone that doesn't know my whole life story. Myself, <laughs> but also my husband. Yeah, he's a really good active listener. Um, most of the time he knows that he just has to listen and not give me unsolicited advice unless I ask for it. How do you take care of your mental health? Mm sitting in my car quietly. Like, if I get to my destination, I'll sit in my car for like an extra 10 minutes and then try to like recuperate myself, just blank space. Not think about anything, just think blank. Oftentimes alone time helps me. Like I really enjoy doing dishes. You don't really have to think about it. You're kind of just on autopilot. You're productive, which makes you feel good, but you also have time to like sit and think if you have things on your mind that you need to mull over. I like to watch cute animal videos. What's the last cute animal video you watched? It was a duck. What was the duck doing? It was eating berries in a cup. 
I really do talk to myself a little bit <laughs> in I think a healthy way. Um, rides to, you know, drives to work. Um, I just kind of remind myself, give myself a little bit of a hype, you know, uh, monologue to get me through, get me into the morning. You know, taking time for yourself, really, it's not just a physical kind of going out and doing something. It's really kind of learning to switch off that, that voice in your head. That's what's going on tomorrow and what do I got to worry about? So you really take advantage of, you know, those moments. I sort of make sure that each role has its own time and that I don't let roles bleed over into others um, so that I only have to be doing the one thing at the one time. I don't, I don't overlap my roles, it's too much. I'm learning to balance um, what I say yes to, but not turning down things just for the sake of turning down things. It's finding what really is most helpful for me, for my growth, for my happiness, and prioritizing those. What realizations have you had about mental health? Growing up uh, where I'm from, mental health was something was taboo. It's something that we don't talk about. It's still something that uh, we're either not allowed to or not uh, encouraged to share because when someone's going through some sort of mental health issues, you used to think that, oh, that guy's, that guy's crazy or we shouldn't talk about it. Like, th these are things that we just shouldn't talk about. Uh, when I came here, and I, uh, it was kind of a culture shock for me because uh, I saw like people were a lot more open about talking about their feelings, talking about the things that they're going through. Why were we ashamed to talk about this in the first place? This is something that we really shouldn't be ashamed talking about. Growing up, when I talk, when we hear mental, or when I hear mental health, the connotation is always like, oh, hospital, or like it's always like worst case scenario. Really, if you have a brain, you have mental health that you have to take care of. It's okay to cry. And it's okay to sit in your suck for a little bit. You know, we don't have to resolve everything or try to fix everything that we're going through or try to understand everything that we're feeling. Failure, failure can be used in a very positive manner. You can, you can turn it into your greatest weapon. And, and it's, it's okay in those failures to recognize that maybe you didn't, you just didn't have enough in you and that it's okay to ask for help. Learning to validate men's mental health that sometimes we don't always see eye to eye. Some can't express themselves the same way. And so that's where the misunderstandings and uncommunicated expectations come from. Because I have a clinical background and formal training, I used to think like, okay, gold standard is therapy and, you know, and medication and uh, treatment planning. And I've been a lot more open to other forms of healing and self-care and taking care of your mental health. Um, and I try to kind of learn about why those things make differences in others versus being so standoffish about those things. Some people could have the biggest smiles on their face, but little do you know is they might be going through one of the toughest times in their life at that point. So it's not always good to assume everybody is okay and that sometimes all you need to do is just ask, like, is everything okay? A lot of the mental health services are on the external. And because of that, you may make me feel good while I'm talking to you, but then when I leave, I'm left with my own thoughts and emotions. And so I think uh, spiritual growth and faith growth formation of some sort helps balance it out when I'm alone with my own. I mean, it's, it's, it's a roller coaster for all. Nobody's on top of it all the time. And uh, everyone to me has either bumped into it seriously, some issues, or, or knows somebody who has. It is not easy. Um, I used to be one of those people who thought it's not a big thing. You know, people are just overreacting or over, they're, they're just being dramatic, you know, like, um, but having, going through some mental health issues of my own, it's really hard. Well, I have actually have a history of mental health issues um, growing up. And before people would be like, you're not ashamed that, you know, kind of like, oh, you went to therapy. But now it's like, people are like, oh, you should go to therapy, you know? I think it's more open and not such stigmatic anymore. You know, we've come a long way with it, but we've still really got a long way to go. I think once we, we tend to have some kind of thought and we'll start to feel right away, but 
just because we think something, just something, just because something pops in our head doesn't mean it's true. Just because I have a thought about myself doesn't mean it's I'm right about myself. It doesn't have to be the case. I've learned through working here that some mental health conditions, there's not necessarily a cure for it, but at the same token, like you can live with it. Like you can learn to still thrive and be happy and be healthy uh, with your condition. And that's why it's so important to like get help so they can give you the tools and the things that you might need to uh, live a successful life. Just because you have a mental health disorder or challenge doesn't mean that you're only limited, like this is your ceiling, this is as far as you can go. Like our job in the mental health field is to kind of help you broaden your horizons and realize that there's more that you can do. Everyone's on their own journey. No journey looks the same and it's not, you know, step one, step two, step three, like some people, are like step one and then step purple and then step Z, like that's okay.